Welcome back. Part two. Let's make a hello too. So now I'm going to introduce you to something called PDM, Program, Program Development Manager, Program Deployment Manager, Programming Developer Monkey. I have no idea what PDM even stands for. PDM is a really cool, cool little tool that most systems have that just lets you look at all of your source files and copy them and rename them. And it will make it a lot easier and clearer for you to follow the code examples that I'm doing rather than me typing start SEU. I could do start SEU for everyone, but I can go into PDM, look at the same source member and uh, just do a two next to it to edit it. Rather than me waffle about it, why don't I just show you? So I'm gonna start PDM, STR PDM and press enter. Here's the programming development manager. And it says, what do I wanna work with? Libraries, objects, or members? Now I wanna work with members because that's where my source member is. So if I do a three, this is now doing work with members in PDM. I don't have to do start PDM in a three. I could just type in work member PDM, WRK, MBR PDM to see the same screen. But I'm gonna do work in QRPGLE source. We already knew this from hello one. In what library? And we know this stuff is called hello. So I'm just gonna type in hello asterisk. So this will show me everything called hello in QRPGLE source in my library. And we're gonna create a hello one, hello two, hello three, hello four. So we'll see all of them, right? Okay, and here's our PDM source member. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna create an RPG LE version of hello one. Now the differences between this old original style of RPG is the original style was narrow. Let's do a five and have a look at the source. We've only got five character opcodes. You only had 10 character, I think, factor one codes and 10 character factor two. If I prompt one of these lines up, oh, which of course I can't prompt when I'm in just view mode, let me do a two on it to edit. If I do an F4, you can see that I've only got 10 characters here, that I've got these indicator values. Don't worry too much if you're a complete fresher. I'm just trying to explain what's going on here. Original code for RPG, five character opcodes, those were the execution instructions. The variables that it could play with were 10 character variables there, 10 character variables here, and a result field. The result is the field name. The main thing to remember is original RPG when you define variables in original RPG, you had a maximum of six characters. So that's why you will see lots of fields, i.e. variables, um, called things like custnum and custnam. That's customer number and customer name. They only had six characters to play with. With the advent of RPG LE in the 90s, that six character limit was increased to 10. Okay, not a huge bonus, but it was pretty significant in, in the day. I can create um, an RPG LE version of this exact same code, but I can also cheat. Shh, don't tell anyone. RPG's got a very neat little uh, convert RPG source command. If I prompt it up. When ILE came out to encourage everyone to expand their source code from these six character constraints to the 10 character constraints, IBM gave us this convert RPG source command. It says, right, what do you want to convert? So I'm going to convert QRPG LE source in Nlitten from hello1 to the same in Nlitten, and I'm going to call it hello2. What differences are we going to see in there then? Let's press enter and find out. Conversion terminated. Oh, that's rather unfortunate, isn't it? I'm going to look at my job log and do this from Q command. Remember in part one of these videos, I said you can do a call Q command. One of the nice things about within PDM is you can just press F10 to do command entry. So from here, I can see exactly what's going on, right? Why did my convert fail? Okay, I couldn't find a log file. So let's see if we can find out where that log file lives. If I say work file, look in all libraries, doesn't exist anywhere. If look in all libraries on the system, can't find it anywhere. Oh no. What are we gonna do? We're completely stuck. No, we're not. We prompt up this convert RPG source command again. The log file just records an audit of what it's doing. You'll notice that you've got an F10 for additional parameters. Let's press F10. Ooh, there's all kinds of extra stuff that it's gonna do, which is while it's taking this old original source, we can expand 
copy members. So if the original source member had copy books in there, where it's sucking in source code from other locations, we could suck that coded, embed it in our new expanded version and show it there too. We can print conversion reports. We can create a log file, or we can just say, I don't need no stinking log file. And that's exactly what I'm gonna do. I'm not gonna include any of this, any of the fancy stuff. We're gonna keep this really simple. So I am literally just saying, convert RPG source from this to this. Don't bother creating me a log file. I know it's gonna work because the code's so simple. I press enter, there we are, conversion complete. Good, let's press F12 to go back into PDM. And now I'll press an F5 to refresh. F5, refresh. And I'd expect to see a hello to being added to this file. There she blows. You'll notice it looks exactly the same, right? The only difference is that it's RPGLE. Let's have a look at it and see what it's done to it. My, that looks mighty, mighty similar, doesn't it? And that's because it is similar. But if I go down and press an F4 on one of these, you can immediately say it, see a difference on the code layouts. We've now just got one field there. We've only got one indicator conditioning rather than three. And our initial value has now got bigger. Our op code is now twice the size because there's twice the bleh, lost the ability to speak. Twice the size because we've got a whole bunch of new op codes that are longer formats in RPG LE. Factor two is bigger, the result field, everything's bigger. We've got a nice length and decimal positions. We still have our high, low, equal indicators. They have some very special meanings, which we'll cover on a different video. And a little comment field. But the basic code itself is exactly the same. So just to show you it's this one, I'm gonna change this to hello too. In fact, no, let's change it to hello world. And we'll put some lowercase in there. How about we compile this? We can do the create command, or because we're in PDM, we can just do a 14. Look, 14 compile. I'm gonna prompt it up with F4. You notice with the original RPG, we did a create RPG program. Now we're in the world of ILE, things have changed rather radically. Rather than one source member being one program, we now have a source member which is called a module. So what we can do is we can create the module and then we can run the create program command that says include this module. Or if we know that we're just gonna be binding one module into one program, we do a create bound RPG program. Think of this like if a program had um, three bits of logic, one was to pull some details from a file, uh, one was to display those details from the file, and the third was to print the details from the file. I could create three separate programs, three separate module sources, called you know module one, module two, module three, and then when I create the program, because I want those three things to be part of it, I'd run the create program, and when it asks me for what the modules are, I would say module one, module two, module three it would create one executable program with those three modules in it, like sub-procedures or subroutines. But again, I'm getting too excited to work modern stuff, so let's keep this really simple. I'm just gonna run a create bound RPG. I hope I didn't confuse you with that guff of Hello2. I press enter. Compile was submitted to batch. Wait, what? I didn't wanna see that. What on earth is that all about? You'll also have heard, if you were carefully listening, there was a little bing sound. That was my compile working in the background. So let me work with submitted jobs. That's because when you create from the PDM menu, by default, it submits to a background job to run the things that you're running. So if I work with them, hello, there's my hello too running in batch. If I do an eight to work with the spooled files, there's my print, let's have a look at it and see what it says. Here's my compile listing telling me Here's my program, blah, 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 blah. It very happily placed this in my library. I'm gonna change for the purposes of these demos as we're gonna be creating a hello one, two, three, four, five. I'm gonna change it to do it all interactively. To change your compile attributes within PDM, you press 
function 18, which is shift F6. And you notice down here it says compiling batch. We're going to change that to no. And for right now, I'm going to leave everything else the same. So now if I do a 14, it comes up saying, well, I've already found one in Enlitten. Do you want to delete it and recompile it? I'm going to say yes. Press enter. It's done it right there interactively. So again, I'm going to press F2 to jump into command entry. Remember, we looked at that just a second ago. And I'm going to call Enlitten hello2. And what I expect to see is a hello world message on the screen. Did you see it flash up really, really quick? If I press F10 to include detailed messages, there's my hello world. I've got to stop fidgeting with myself while I'm recording videos. It's probably really annoying with my hands flashing in and out of the corner of the screen. Um, but yeah, there we have it. So there we have an RPG 3, RPG 400 from AS400 days. And here we have it in an ILE format. Now, how about we take that ILE format and we make it free format ILE? Let's get rid of the columns. That's really easy to do too, but that sounds like a whole new video. So come back in a second.